ain't gonna even lie to you. This review might qualify for a YouTube short. Last night might have been the beginning of tank season. I don't know what's going on. All I know is we got our ass kicked up and down the court. We're going to talk about it, but we ain't going to talk long about it. Piano. Chris Gang, go hard. Yeah. Fattest in the game, we'll be on one. Yeah. I talk hoops, so sick, y'all. All up on the court, but we gon' yeah. score. Memphis, bring it, he straight from Tennessee. Yeah. Demo Red Spike, and let's go for yeah. it. He that MVP. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, reppin' that blue. All on the court, baby, look out. What is up, Grizz Gang? This is Memphis X with I Talk Hoops. And last night, we witnessed a tragedy. The Grizzlies fell to the Phoenix Suns at home, 119 to 94. They were basically getting run up out of the building, their own home building, by the Phoenix Suns without DeAndre Ayton. Uh, they got waxed by 30 points. I think the league got up to 38 points last night. So it really wasn't much to talk to talk about. The Grizzlies had 51 points almost at the end of the third quarter. It was a righteous and thorough ass kicking by a team that has an identity. And we witnessed a team that has zero identity. <sighs> I really don't know what to tell you. Um, a team that was one of the best defensive teams last season has turned into one of the worst defensive teams. And I know they have to be bottom three in defense this year, at least. And I'm probably in some metrics, they're the worst defensive team. There's really not much to talk about this game. The tone was set on the first shot when Jay Crowder hit a shot over Jaron Jackson, a three pointer on the move. We should have known what it was going to, what it was going to be after that. That was another little bit of foreshadowing. And to be honest, I don't really want to talk about it too much. The game kind of killed my mood last night. Uh, almost got me to cancel my trip to New Orleans today to watch the Grizzlies. But F that, I'm still going to New Orleans. And that's why this is going to be real short. I'm getting ready to take off now. Still going to New Orleans. Still going to enjoy myself in New Orleans. Still hopefully going to enjoy a win by the Memphis Grizzlies in New Orleans. So that's it. I'm not going to talk too much about the game. I'm going to give you some stats. Jared Jackson had another pretty good game. Um, 19 points, four rebounds, uh, two or six from three-point line. A lot of it was in garbage time because the garbage time started in the second half. Uh, John Morant, 26 points, 12 freaking rebounds, six assists. Uh, 6 and 19 from the free throw line, 10 and 19 from the field. Uh, a lot of garbage time. Desmond Bain started to get himself on track a little bit. He was just 4 of 13. DeAnthony Melton had a terrible game. Steven Adams had a terrible game. Coach Jenkins had a terrible game playing John Conchar as the guy with the most minutes off the bench. Yeah, if you see my, you, you see this, um, this Twitter post, you see this Twitter post, this is where I'm at. So yeah, that that's, that's the one right there. So yeah, this is going to be short, quick, really wasn't anything too, uh, telling about this game. Um, John Contra played it over Xavier Tillman again. Tyus Jones only got 15 minutes, didn't play too much. Um, it was just a thorough, ass kicking and until the coach learns that Steven Adams is the most horrible, horrible defensive player in the NBA, especially when you put him in the pick and roll, this team is going to continue to be bad. Now, the bad part about that is you'll be getting pissed off because we'll be losing a lot this season. The good part is this draft is real good. So, if we do lose a lot this season, 
we will get a good player to go with Jaron and Ja. And three, if we do lose a lot this season, we'll be one step closer to getting a coach that can actually learn to play his best lineups. So this is year three of Coach Taylor Jenkins. And I've been saying this, I've been saying this from year one. Now this started, I started this year one about my disdain for his coaching and his rotations in year one. The COVID season kind of, you know, chilled me out a little bit, especially since we made, you know, made the play in and eventually a playoffs. You know, there's really nothing you can say when a coach makes the playoffs in his second year. Um, but what we did learn is that the COVID season kind of probably made his rotations for him with all the people that were injured and the people that kept missing games last season. Now that he has a fully healthy squad, he's back to what he was doing in year one, unable to figure out who the best players on his teams are. Um, and his constant need to play players who should be playing in NBA games. Year one, it was Marco. Year three, it is Conchar. Um, so we're going to see what's what's going to happen from this year on out. And I promise you, if we lose tonight to the Pelicans, I Talk Hoops becomes Draft Central. Peace.